Maison Joseph Drouin, it is a family affair. I didn't realize just how intensely a family affair it is until I did some research. And everyone involved with Drouin is a Drouin. <laughs> everyone involved with Drouin is a Drouin. You're, well, yeah, you know, but, but, right. but you see my point? It's amazing. Uh, Laurent Drouin, by the way, um, would you say American market manager for mm -hmm. Mr. Drouin? Is that the technical American market title? export director for the U.S.? I mean, I don't know, have many many hats and the but, Caribbean's as well. But when you see Drouin on a bottle, it's it's him, right? So, you. I'm, I represent twenty five percent. Twenty five. <laughs> because you know my siblings. I mean, we're all working together. So, yeah, but yeah. you're right. It is a family. Yeah, I was amazed and, and started uh, started in the late 1800s, right? So how many generations? Uh, four generations. Uh, started in 1880 yep. uh, by Joseph Drouin, my great-grandfather. Then you had Maurice Drouin and then my father, who uh, took the presidency in 1957. And now my father is, is has slowed down, is retired, and, and the four generations is in full command. So family-owned, family-run, and, and with great, great passion. Well, you know, we were talking earlier, um, your dad left his mark, not just on Burgundy, but on, on wine in general. I mean, the, the, some of the stuff you were telling me uh, just a little while ago, it's amazing what an innovator, and, I, and these are things I didn't even know. Um, talk about some of the things that your father did with regards to innovating in the world of Burgundy and the world of Pinot Noir. Well, if, if I take just, a, just, I would say a few things, uh, there's one thing there, that's the cork. And in 1961, he decided as a proof of authenticity, because sometimes you could go wrong by lending the bottle, that could be a mistake or so. He said, the proof of authenticity is going to be on the cork. I'm going to put the appellation, the vintage, and obviously uh, the producer, which is <laughs> Joseph Drouin, 61. I mean, no one was doing it before 100%, and he decided to do that. Uh, seven years later, he knew historically that there was probably some potential to produce some fabulous wine. He went all the way up north of Bonn, driving mm -hmm. his old Citroën DS and uh, going all the way to Chablis and invested in Chablis, bought 100 acres in Chablis. He was able to pick the right location uh, in, in, in several places in, in, in Chablis and he was able to get some Chablis Grand Cru, Les, Plo, Les Preuses, Les Bougros, Les Clos, Les Vaudésir. Uh, some <laughs> several Chablis Premier Cru as well, and bought uh, some good pieces of chunk in between the Mont Milieu and the, Mont, and, and the um, Monte Tonnerre with the Valley de Vauvillain. So all this to say that he was among the very first one to go to Chablis in 1968. Um, expand the domain there and there and, and uh, experiment many things. He was the first one to hire a woman as a winemaker, being allowed of, of, of being in charge of kind of such a large producer in mm -hmm. 1974 with Laurent Jabard. Yeah. Uh, went uh, to Oregon. Historically, he's been traveling a lot and, and, and get in touch with the people in Oregon. Anyway, all this to say, I invested in Oregon in 1987, bought land in, in Dundee, in the Willamette Valley. Um, yeah. Voila, so uh, now we, we have a lot of <laughs> pressure on our shoulder because that, that's the, what my father did for the third generation. Now the fourth yeah. generation has to do something. Yeah. Oh, but I mean, we have to take this into perspective when this was being done. I mean, because you can sit there and go, oh, Oregon, oh, well, Oregon. You know, oh, Chablis, oh, Chablis, I love Chablis. It's hot right now. But we're talking Chablis in 1968. I mean, in, right. in America, Chablis was coming out of a bottle of Ingle Nook. It was $1.99 <laughs> for a gallon. And I've seen that. And yeah, yeah, and your father, of course, yeah, and your father was scooping up tons of prime acreage. 20 years before Chablis would even be kind of recognized as a, hey, wow, Chardonnay? At least in our part of the world. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I, I, it's true. But we're talking about almost, not 50, but almost 50 years ago in, in, in Chablis. And there was definitely what I call a visionaire. Mm -hmm. and, and in Oregon, in 87, think about it. You had what I call the, the crazy guys or the steamboat guys. And Adelsheim, Ponzi, uh, David Lett, uh, Steve Carey, I mean, all those guys. And, and, and when my father was able to buy that land, beautifully located, I mean, he was the first one. You had, I think, like around 40 wineries, and I'm not even sure there was that much. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you have more than 400 wineries today in Oregon. <laughs> but we were the first one. And actually, December, we bought 122 acres of Eola and Mitty Hill in Oregon. So we're expanding 
there because we believe the potential for fabulous wines is is, is in Oregon. Yeah, I heard. Nicely done. Nicely Thank done, you. Monsieur Joanne. <laughs> so let's talk about some of these wines. And, and as we talk about the wines, uh, it, it'll be fun to talk about what what separates a, a negociant from the domain and how mm -hmm. the lines have blurred over the years. Like, for example, can we start with the Chablis? Absolutely. You know, just um, because this is Chablis Premier Cru, uh, and it's, you know, Joanne Vaudon. Mm -hmm. and, uh, the historical name of the property that you purchased at that time, right? Now, but there, there's Domaine Chablis in this wine as well as... There's absolutely, there's Domaine wines in this, and that, so the fruits coming from our vineyards, Les Roncières, Les Moirins, and so on, and, and, and the Montmilieu, and there is also fruit that we buy from other growers. Mm -hmm. So we're able, that, that for the grower part, I mean, we're able to see what they're doing in Chablis. We see how they farm the vine and, and uh, trying to be organic as we are 100% in our domain. And, and, and all this, and, and, and we're just taking care of those grapes and, and selecting the best grapes as possible to get the purest expression of where the grapes are coming from. Yeah. And in this case, that would be, that would be Chablis. You're right. I mean, the, the, the negociant propriétaire thing is, is is something that we're facing every day. It looks like the markets kind of a, have a, a negative thing when it comes to Burgundy. Oh, the big negociant, the big name like Joseph Drouin, you know, they're big, they're negociant. They don't. Well, yeah. we're among the largest owner in Burgundy. We own 187 acres, but the, the negociant activity as well is based on the trust and long relationship we had with the growers and we're able to pick the good location and the, the good crop as well. So, and ultimately we're just producing Joseph Drouin wines. Mm -hmm. uh, and and, and th so all that negative aspect, I think, I mean, that was mainly true. We have not been perfect in the past, but we're talking maybe 50 years ago. Right, right, and That right. was a long, long time ago. Yeah. So it, it, it is time to see that as a different, and even the small proprietaire or the tiny one mm -hmm. uh, are negotiating. You probably know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I see it all the time where people are making three barrels of this and two barrels of that, but the two barrels of that is from land that they don't... And there is nothing wrong with that either. I mean, yeah, it's all for right. the good of Burgundy and, and those reasons. So, uh, yeah, this is, this is it's, it's an interesting conversation. Yeah. I mean, I wish we had the entire... You know, hour, an hour, hour or something like that. But, you know, but, but it's, it's fun to tackle because I think a lot of folks just think from a negotiation standpoint, they don't understand that you have a maybe 40, 50 year or 30 year, whatever track record with these growers. A history mm -hmm. of working with these people on a consistent basis to get the quality you need, as opposed to just... Um, Hi, I'm Jeffrey Chambertan and two barrels of uh, Maurice Saint Denis over here. Like, you know, some kind of auction thing where you guys just walk into a big room and pick out barrels of stuff and yeah. put your label on it. Oh, yeah, well, it never works that never way. Never works that never. way, right? But I, I, th I almost think there's kind of like this perception maybe here in the States where, you know, people are just kind of, you know. Yeah, maybe, maybe that, that's, it, it's true. Maybe well, it, that's why we're trying to reinforce the message about what the negociants really are yeah. in Burgundy and the, yeah. the, 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 the really good ones are. I mean, we, we buy the crop or we buy the juice and then we do the aging process in our cellar. We yeah. control all that. Uh, and, and we never buy a finished wine. Yeah. Never, never, never. Because, yeah. because that, that we would not be able to control what's in it. Right, right, right. No, yeah. and with the, from a negotiation standpoint, because I, I love the middle wine, let's talk about this. I don't think a lot of people know this is a Gaussian <laughs> wine. Yes, they see Marquis de la Guiche, one of the biggest names in Burgundy, one of the greatest wines produced in Burgundy. But the land belongs to the la Guiche family. It's been more than six hundred, almost uh, six hundred and fifty years now, or so. Uh, and since nineteen forty-seven. Uh, shake an agreement between two gentlemen, the Marquis de la Guiche and Maurice Douin, my grandfather. Mm. We've been the exclusive producer and distributor of the wines of the La Guiche family. So we've been farming the vines um, with the La Guiche family. They're here. They control what we're doing. They give their advice as well. So it's, it's a teamwork. Uh, the great, great partnership. Technically, it is a negotiation work. Right. Uh, and it is recognized the Chassagne Montrachet Premier Cru Le Morgeau, which is this one, or even Le Montrachet Marquis de la Guiche. Uh, if, if Honestly, if, if you don't like that one or if you don't recognize this one as, a, as among the greatest one from Burgundy because it's a negociant, <laughs> right, right. Uh, that makes some other people happy because they'll be able to get their hands on what you don't want. So. Right. No, that was the greatest story you told earlier about the guys. You know, it's like, oh, no, take all the negociant ones off the table. And you're like, and like, no, 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 leave that one. <laughs> that was hot. But it's a fabulous wine as well. I mean, it's, it's a premier cru. Uh, again, I mean, those wines are, are carrying my name. Yeah. They're carrying yeah. the name of Veronique and Philippe and Frédéric. Mm -hmm. Philippe, Philippe is the estate manager, I didn't mention that. Veronique is the winemaker for the property in Oregon. Frédéric yeah. is the president of the company. And I'm, I'm based in New York. My heart remains in Burgundy, uh, and, and, but I'm based in New York because I'm in charge of this 
huge country. Yeah. Historically, we've been selling a lot of wines and it's been a very important market for us. But mm. uh, as I said, I mean, the, the four of us, including with my father, I mean, we, we have our name. That's my name. Joseph Drouin, my name is on the label. Yeah. I want to be proud and I want to be able to stand in front of the people and being proud of what's in the bottle, knowing that it's in respectful for, for the ancestors and it's, it's, it's also for the good and, and the loyalty of the consumers. And, and I would say people like you, you are my yeah. ambassador. I yeah, can't yeah. be everywhere. Right. <laughs> well, you know what? These are pretty good. Thank you for putting your name on the bottle and thank you for making this beautiful negotiant slash domain slash whatever burgundy wine. Uh, you guys are killing it right now. The Chablis is just absolutely just chock full of shells and brine and salt and it's, apples and... It's a call for uh, it's a call for oysters, yeah. yeah. We didn't talk note, about that the little guy as well, but that one is a little Chorel et Bonne. I say little Chorel et Bonne. It's uh, well, one of the largest so producers. Not so little, but anyway, <laughs> it's a great invitation to Burgundy as well. It's a great expression of the Pinot from Burgundy and... and uh, but uh, yeah, we'll keep we'll try to keep up the good work. Yeah. That's for sure. And uh, it's 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 a pain to deal with Burgundy because of the weather and the Pinot Noir is so sensitive. But you know what? There's something magic in wine, and that's the magic we want to bring every year. Mm, like Doug Henning, magic. Laurent, cheers. Thanks Thank so you. much, man. Thank this you. was awesome. Woo. <laughs>